guys, this is Alex again from Mangant House German Shepherds. Today's topic is the straight back versus slow back German Shepherd. A lot of people are calling me and they're demanding uh, that uh, they get a straight back German Shepherd. And while what we sell is working line German Shepherds versus show line German Shepherds, which is probably the correct way to express it, I know exactly what people mean because the German Shepherd is no longer the way it used to be and a lot of people call me and they are expressing a classic German Shepherd and so while they might not know the term for it, working line versus show line, I know exactly what they mean. So uh, before uh, we get started <laughs> If you could subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon, I would really appreciate it. So, um, on my website, there's a section called Articles, and I'm gonna put it in the link below, which shows that the German Shepherd is no longer one breed. The German Shepherd is actually five subbreeds. Uh, let me describe them. Let me name them first, then describe them. So you have two show types, the West German show type and the American show type. Those are both show types. And you have three working types, the DDR type, the East German type, the Czechoslovakian working type, which is derived from the DDR type, and the West German working type. So <clears throat> three working types two show types. So people getting a German Shepherd, they think, well, a German Shepherd is a German Shepherd. Isn't it the same thing, no matter which uh, breed you get? The answer is it's not the same thing. The breed has changed over time, and the breed has different attributes based on consumer market demand. Before getting into that, <clears throat> let me cover how the breed separated and what you can expect to find in today's marketplace in 2023 and discuss it in a very general way. The first separation of the breed I'm going to discuss happened at the end of World War II in 1945 when the Nazi Germany was captured and divided into East Germany and West Germany. East Germany was called the DDR, the Deutsche Democratic Republic, and West Germany was called the FRG, the Federal Republic of Germany or what is now today West Germany. Communist East Germany was part of the Warsaw Pact, <clears throat> which included Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Poland, obviously the former Soviet Union, and so forth. So the East German German Shepherd, the DDR German Shepherd, existed from 1945, the end of World War II, all the way through 1961, when the Berlin Wall went up, all the way up until 1989 when the Berlin Wall fell and by 1991 the Soviet Union fell and split into 15 separate countries as opposed to one country and a lot of people think Russia and the Soviet Union are synonymous but obviously they're not. Russia was one entity out of the Soviet Union which was a collection of 15 nation states acting as now separate countries. But that's a whole different matter. What matters here is to understand that this political separation of Germany, even though it's physically still one country, created a separation or a rift in the breed. So what did that look like? So the DDR, the Deutsche Democratic Republic German Shepherd, uh, was a heavier boned, big blocky heads, heavier bone structure, uh, thicker, denser coats because it was used to living in colder conditions, um, physically very muscular dog, much more physically muscular than its West German show type counterpart by far. It's a, it's like a Sherman tank, built strong on a powerful frame. The dogs were originally bred more for military duty than to be pets, although they could be pets. Um, 
The East German type usually, not always, this is a generalization, were more suspicious, uh, not as friendly, not as approachable, I would say somewhat more aggressive to some degree than their West German counterparts. Again, these are generalizations. These are not per every dog you meet. Um, had a higher ratio of defense drive to prey drive and usually were trained in defense drive, not prey drive. The way you would train a personal protection dog versus a sport dog. I guess if you're watching this video, you may you know what that means. Or if you're a pet person who never had to train in the sport of shoot suit, you may not know what this means. So let me digress and take a step back. In 1899, when the Prussian military captain, remember it wasn't Germany yet in, in the 19th century, it was Prussia. Uh, the Prussian military captain, Captain Max von Stefan, that's founded this breed, he needed to create a yardstick or a benchmark by which he could perpetuate this breed after he dies. And he emphasized form over function. He said, let my dog always remain a working dog. That's a direct quote. He created a sport called Schutzhund or a protection dog translated into English just like Schutzmann is policeman in German to English he created a sport called Schutzhund which was meant to be used as a benchmark by which uh, you could judge a dog as being breed worthy or not breed worthy now <clears throat> Schutzhund is the only tr test of working dogs that was originally created in the 19th century, and I think Captain Max von Stefanitz died in 1935 before the beginning of World War II, <clears throat> and his test and his breed outlived him, because obviously we have German Shepherds today and he died in 1935. So, <clears throat> what is this test and why is it relevant? Well, the test is in three parts, for those who don't know. The test is protection, tracking, and obedience. The most relevant part of the test that I think is what we're going to focus on is the protection phase. The protection phase encourages strong genetics. It is no longer a sheep dog breed or a herding breed. The name is Deutsche Schufferhund or German sheep dog if you translate it word for word. So the breed in German is called Deutsche Schufferhund. It was formed by the auspices of the SV, the Veri Schufferhund, or the German Shepherd Felix Society. So in Germany there's an organization called the SV, which is the parent breed club of Germany. And so <clears throat> he founded the SV, and as a consequence, he only meant certain dogs to breed and other dogs should not breed. So dog sports have a very tremendous influence on the genetics of dogs. By selection testing dogs which can meet this breed standard and only breeding those dogs and dogs which can't meet this breed standard should be weeded out of the breeding program, he created a selection criteria that only the strong survive. In other words, just like in nature of Darwinism, only the strong survive, so he created this with German Shepherds that only dogs which meet certain attributes shall pass on their genes. So in the United States, <clears throat> you can breed any two dogs, as long as the male has an AKC pedigree and the female has an AKC pedigree, you can breed them together. It doesn't matter, this dog could be crooked, <clears throat> this dog could be sh uh, fearful and shake and shiver. <laughs> as long as they have AKC papers proving they're purebred, you can breed them. But in Germany and other European countries, there is a higher standard. In Germany, a dog, male or female, must both have a Schutzen 1 title at least. Typically, males have a Schutzen 3 title. Uh, and they must do a breed survey with a Kormeister, uh, which does the confirmation rating essentially as F S G for good, S G sehr good. Uh, KKL1 and KKL2. They no longer do one and two, but they used to. So um, the dogs passes a confirmation score and a protection routine, uh, which is part of the Schutzen trial. 
which includes tracking and obedience. Now, why is this relevant? Well, let's say you're taking the, the part of the sport which is tracking. Any dog has a good sense of smell, but a dog that can follow a set step for step for 300 steps, 500 steps, 900 steps, whatever the case is, that's not having a good nose. That's having olfactory obedience. The dog is driven to continue along the scent without giving up. That's where our search and rescue dogs come from, from the German Shepherds bred from these police lines, or Schutzen lines, essentially. They're not necessarily police dogs, but for the simplification, you can think of Schutzen as the foundation from which police dogs then come from. In other words, sport dogs and protection dogs and police dogs come from Schutzen dogs. It is the genetic foundation for all other things in this breed. On the other hand, the American pet lines have no standards by which dogs should be bred. None whatsoever. Uh, the other demand is the dog has an A stand to rule out hip dysplasia. In the United States, you have OFA, the Orthopedic Foundation of Animals, and dogs have to have hip and elbow uh, x-rays in order to be bred. So, if you're following the German standard, your dog will have both a working title, Schutzen title, and a hip and elbow title. And then when it meets both two criteria for health and working temperament, only then the dog will be bred. If you're following the American standard, there is no standard. As long as there is a AKC papers on the mother and father, you breed them together, you have puppies, voila. You can say you have pure-blooded German Shepherds, which you do because both parents are pure-blooded, uh, pure but that's not enough of a selection criteria that the dog should be bred. Now, other breeds then became part of the Schutzen trials. Now you, you are using that trial for Rottweilers, Doberman Pinschers, uh, you are seeing it in the French uh, dog, the Besseron, uh, which I believe was the forebearer of the Doberman Pinscher, uh, among, among other breeds. You see it with, with the Weimaner, you see it with the, uh, with the standard uh, giant Schnauzer. So other breeds now able to do this sport, uh, participate in the sport of Schutzhund, but it was originally created for the German Shepherd specifically, and it's uniquely suited to the German Shepherd. What you're looking for in a sport dog is good grip, the ability to be biddable and easily trainable, good nose and good olfactory obedience, and just a general dog which is brave, not cowardly, and a dog which wants to please. Now, <clears throat> so why is this sport relevant? When the West German show type was developed in the 1970s um, by the Martin brothers, the sport was watered down especially the protection part, to allow these dogs to pass. Since the SV demanded that dogs have the uh, Schutzen title, and show dogs were bred to be softer, to make them more manageable, the sport therefore had to accommodate the new breed criteria. And so instead of making the dogs strong, they made the dogs weak because they weakened down the sport. So a sport dog, a West German show line, a beautiful black and red, technically may have a Schutzen title, but they perform a watered down version of the protection routine as compared to the working types. And so technically they're Schutzen dogs, but that's a watered down routine. So now, so getting back to the five types, let's go back. So the East German type uh, was a working type. It had to pass Schutzen titles. It had a, a, something, a system called the Berlitzer system, which was used to breed a dog for hardness, softness, uh, how handler sensitive they are or not handler sensitive they are, pain tolerance, uh, all kinds of criteria. There were multiple lines, line 13A, line 5A. They created lines with certain characteristics. And all of this existed in a very scientific way to approach the, a breeding program. It's almost like you have a cavalry horses and you breed them within a specific breedership and you create a very precise criteria for cavalry horses. So they apply that same kind of reasoning to dogs. 
Now, the question is, does the East German Shepherd exist today? I would argue it doesn't. Uh, a lot of people understand that the DDR type was a highly sought after type because of its strong color, dark color, dark pigmentation, strong bodies, physically and anatomically very powerful. And so a lot of people want an East German Shepherd. Well, East Germany died out in 1989. How can you have an East German Shepherd if the country of East Germany no longer exists? That's impossible. So the East German type has been mixed with other types for, for over 35 years. Now there are some breeders which claim, well, we have DDR dogs. They might have DDR dogs five or six generations ago. Most people who claim they have DDR dogs are basically, it's a marketing gimmick. We have these dogs of old, when men were men and dogs were dogs. You know, that's the kind of uh, argument you're going to hear. In reality, it's impossible to have that type when so many other types started being blended in when East Germany fell. We had a rush of selling off these dogs. Uh, and uh, there are some preservation breeders which do carry this line. Uh, but it's not a marketing gimmick with them. They actually understand this type. But realistically, in today's marketplace, in 2023, you're not going to find a DDR dog, purely a DDR dog. You might have a dog where there's a significant ancestry five generations, six generations back, or pure DDR dogs. But you can no longer have a DDR dog because there's no more DDR registry. By definition, you cannot have a DDR dog for that reason alone. So now, the next type we're going to...